Hello, journeymen, journeywomen. This is A Hero's Journey with Dr. D, the podcast. This podcast was designed to inspire, to encourage, to educate, and to motivate, helping you get beyond your first move and creating a better mindset today. Now, for an entertaining video version of this episode, along with many more at my YouTube series, go to A Hero's Journey with Dr. D.com. Now, let's begin. In Them Streets with Dr. D. <laughs> yeah, I got a segment called In Them Streets with Dr. D. That's me. So, a lot of times while I'm, I'm driving, I'm talking to somebody. Yeah, it's for them. A lot of times people, see, it's three reasons, three reasons why I, I created the YouTube channel. There's three, three reasons. Because... It's three reasons why a person doesn't get therapy, coaching, or help. I believe it's three reasons. Tell me if you think I'm wrong or right. One, they don't have the right type of insurance. Second, second, they don't got the right type of money. And third, man, ain't nothing wrong. There's something wrong with you. Give me that handy. <laughs> pass that blunt. Yeah, 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 man. Pass that blunt so I can escape. So what happens is that a person stays in a perpetual state of escape and they never deal with the problem. As long as they got that fifth, they never have to deal with the problem. As long as they got that blunt, they got never, never have to deal with, uh, deal with the problem. They got never have to deal with the problem because they get the dopamine rush. They get to the escape. Yeah, you want to stay in perpetual state of escape. When you're younger, people get drunk and they smoke and all of a sudden because it's fun and really because they we don't want to deal with what we got right. behind our head. Yeah, but when you're young, just think about it. We, we, 14, 15 years old, and you're doing stuff, you're drinking, whatever. You're not generally drinking by yourself. You're drinking with your boys. Yeah, but you just having fun right there. Right. At point. But when you get to 20, 22, and all this and that, now you're not drinking for fun. Anymore. Life hits. Yeah, so, so what happens is that life hits, and then what happens is that your, your memory goes back. You remember when what made you feel good? When you had a good time? It's not, it, it only remember the good things. And that's when you say you miss the old time. Right, and so that I remember when I drunk hit it and I smoked this uh, this blunt, I, I had good feelings. So therefore, when she tripping, give me the hitting. It's gonna it's gonna let you escape for a little while. You gonna put that problem to the side, and you gonna put this hitting in front. Right, and, yeah, a couple blunts. I, I you stay in perpetual state. You be like Snoop Dogg, smoke it all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you because it allows you to stay es- escaped. But then when you come down. I just need another blood. I just need another, another shot. And then be, and what, what you're doing, it's just, you're killing yourself. You're, you're, yeah. Yeah. Your liver. You don't got none of that. You really just, you gotta deal with reality. Yeah. And then you say, well, I can't, can't get this, but maybe I get some, I can make some stuff, like some meth. You're crossing you cross one, one to another. Like a person said, well, I don't smoke weed no more, but they smoke about four packs of cigarettes a day. And wonder why they ain't got no money. Because cigarettes cost. That's right. But the cigarette companies count on the addiction. Because you ain't got the money, why you be a cigarette? Because I got to have it, right? Yeah, you're addicted. Well, I ain't got no money. But you spent $50 a day on cigarettes. I know people that do that, for real. Yeah. And they say, I ain't got to have it. I can quit any time I want to. But you still got four packs in the case. Make sure you always have something. And then you always can tell their addiction, what they go to, is when they into conflict. No, just in the, in the argument. <laughs> right, oh, that'll be right back. What is that? <laughs> and really, it's the deep breathing that resets them. Mm-hmm. The deep breathing without the cigarette resets the part of your brain. But they're thinking it's that nicotine. But the nicotine can help. But it's really the breathing in, breathing in. But the nicotine actually gives you stimulation. It's the drug. You deep breathe. It helps to reset, but when it resets with the drug. I never thought about it that way. The way you're saying it now, it makes sense. Say, fix. I'm stressed. So I think in my head I need a cigarette. But the whole time I really need to just breathe in and breathe out the whole time. And I'd be good. Like I just hit that cigarette. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm not good because I didn't hit the cigarette. Yeah. Just think you look at people. 
You think somebody's smoking it, they like they really enjoy that cigarette, right? Yeah. But they take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, I'm good now. I'm good at Well, for instance, they have a heated discussion. And he said, listen, I'll, leave, take her. I'll be right back. Take, you take a walk. And you take a walk and you take and you just deep breathing. Oh, I need to take a run. And then you come back, okay, I'm good now. Because you, you fought with everything in your body and you got it out. So you reset. Have you, have you ever had just a situation where you just went off? And then you come back and say, man, like I, I should have did that. Yeah. Because you was in the moment. You was in the moment, but not only were you in the moment, you were in your feelings. Yeah. You was in your feelings. Your feelings wasn't affecting you. You was in them. It was guiding you. Your feelings were guiding you. Never be a man that's led by his emotions. Throw the feelings away. Right. You don't have one time a month you can blame it on. <laughs> yeah, because they, that, that, they're heightened and generally a female are heightened at that certain time uh, with, they don't even they'll tell you yeah it's not a good time for me because everything everything they're hypersensitive to everything so why is me and we hypersensitive to everything probably because in fact in, in part a lot of men have been raised by the, by the mothers yeah, and, most people have. and aunties yeah most people have. that's what's wrong with most of the kids today yeah, they're reactionary. And all these guys, they're all, they thuggish, right? Yeah. Acting right feminine. Oh, no, man. No, you ain't going to do that to me. It's all reactionary. Yeah. All reactionary. Yo, they, oh, no. Because what real men, what men do, for the most part, a manly thing is just, okay. If you're going to do something, you're going to do it. You ain't going to talk about it. You, you, you ain't gonna project or you ain't gonna even forecast. When, when it happens to them, they won't know what's gonna happen. It's gonna happen then or it's gonna happen when they're unaware. Because as a man, I have to, I have to think about, I have to strategically plan. All right. Okay. So this situation not gonna be handled this way. Either I'm gonna observe my environment and do it right then, or I'm a I'm gonna be a good chess chess guy. I'm a, I'm a retreat. I retreat. And say okay. My pros and my cons. If I do this, I'm gonna think about my whole plan, and I'm not gonna let the person know. That's how you're supposed to. You're not supposed to let nobody know. Yeah. Um, even the Bible said, "Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand, right hand is doing. And that's and that's why I'm saying that when you're in your emotions. In your feelings, we all get there. We all get there. But the goal is to actually pull back and say, "All right." Uh, after it happens, to retrieve it, to just evaluate what happened, so it don't keep on happening. And you wonder why your friends keep dropping off. <laughs> why you can't, can't never keep a date? Why you can't never keep a relationship? Why you can't never keep a job? The common denominator is you. Hey, we, I think we often try to blame other people That's what most do. about our life. Yeah. Just think about it. I'm trying to blame everybody else about my life. I'll be 45. I'm 45 years old. If it wasn't my daddy, be dead 15 years. If he came and saw me, maybe, maybe. If he came, if he spent time, maybe. But how do you do what you've been given? You play cards. Cards. I can play uh, low ball. You know, low ball. No. You play spades. Is that, is that is that 21? I don't, oh, no. I, I, I've never played low ball. I really just got into cards this year. Okay, so you know the, the principle of it. Yeah, the, I know the principle. The principle. Of, I didn't play spade or tough. Okay. But the principle is that you play your hands you've been given. Yeah. It's just the hand you've been given. A good card player just plays what he has. Not what he wish he had. If you play what you wish you had, then you live in somebody else's life. That's what you're saying. Man, if I only had such like him. But you're not him! And you ain't got it! What are you gonna do with what you got? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with what you have? 
You can, you can live your life complaining about what you don't have. Or you can change up and be grateful for what you do have. It's all about lens, how you look at it. Tyler Perry, his father beat him and, and then he got molested. And Oprah Winfrey, she got molested. Uh, and uh, that's about to check they billionaires. Did they stay there? No. Tyler used all, all this adversity for stories. Yeah, he got the Biggest studio on the uh, Southeast, I think. Yeah, airstrip. He got airstrip on his uh, on property. He got a what? <laughs> a play, an airstrip, but plays playing land on his property. For real? Yeah. I ain't know that. Yeah, yeah. He got 200 acres, something like that. He got a lot. He got that yeah. But he, he worked toward it. He used the adversity for his benefit. He didn't stay stuck in it. Yeah, but he used it. Like the stories came from a place that he had to go when he was getting beat. He had to basically go somewhere, and he wrote stories. He wrote. Stories. A lot of stuff comes from from his trauma, and that that became part of his therapy. Right. So will you will you use your Will you use your misery as a detriment to your progress, or would it be a catalyst to your destiny? Does that make sense? And would it be a will you use your misery as a detriment to keep you down from progress, or will you use it as a catalyst to help you get to your destiny? I don't know what that means. You don't. A ca okay, catalyst means the, uh, gas. You say gas? Gas. Gas, okay, gas, yeah. It's the gas. The I get no. I got a car. Okay. I need gas to get to my destiny. Okay. The catalyst. But it could be the misery. The misery could be the gas that you need to put in the car to get to your destination. It ain't the best gas. You may have the smoothest ride, but it gets you there. And does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Right. So that's what the catalyst is. So will it be the detriment? Would you? Because it's all about choice. What do you choose it to be? Will you choose the fact that Daddy wasn't there to be the catalyst, the, the, the detriment to your progress, or will you use it to be the catalyst or the gas to your destiny? Well, I had kids. I'm gonna be a good father. My kids always gonna be my father. I'm always be engaged with my, my kids. I'm going to be the best father that I can be because my father wasn't there. Does that make sense? Yeah, and because you can't, you can stay stuck and he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Or you can use it as gas for you being there. Now I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Because you can, because what happens to people, is they stay in the misery all the time. Give me another shot. <laughs> Give me another shot. Give me another hit. Get up blood. Give me some white powder. Give me some powder. Give me some meth. Give me some. Give me some fentanyl. So I can stay asleep all the time. See, so you, you stay asleep in your life. The last time I, I looked, only had one life to live, and can't nobody live it for me. Definitely can't. Yeah. I only have one life to live. Only one. So when you go to the throne. And God said, what do you do with what I gave you? The Lord would have did it, but you know that woman? That's what Adam did. You know, that woman you gave me messed it up. Or you can say, daddy wasn't there. Okay, I got shot. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, you never outlive your excuses. He said, but what did you do with what I gave you? In the capacity that you could do it. It's this woman I've got. She's a Christian speaker. And did your Lifetime movie on back in the 70s. I mean, she's been living for a while. She was an artist. Uh, I know her name. It come to me, baby. And she's an artist. And she got an accident, a skin accident. She had a skin accident. This is in the 70s, early 70s. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I saw movies about her in the 70s. Lifetime was like, uh, and what happened is that she was a skin accident and she became a quadriplegic. 
paralyzed from neck down. However, she's not next. She her shoulders move. Her shoulders can move. And she can move up her shoulder arm like this. But everything else is her chest. She still. No. Man, she, she does speaking, she paints, and she married. Last 40 years. I know her name. Cause my, but my, my point is she's, she started out living, and she's an artist. So she had to learn how to draw, how to paint with her mouth. Crazy. Yeah. It's some dude that does that, and I swear he can paint crazy. Yeah. I mean, so she used what she had. The gifts were still there. She just had to use another way to do it. I've seen something with God. He, he had no arms. But he drove with his feet. He wrote with his feet. I said commercial with that. Yeah. He's an engineer. He, he, he wrote, did everything with his feet. No arms. But my, my point is, she been doing ministry and doing stuff for the last 40 years. And she had, and she just, she they had put some contraption on where she can move her arms. Like, so like she can move her hands, but she can't move her hands. They got a brace on that, but she can move her shoulders. So she move her shoulders, so it allows her to move her, arm, her muscles in her arm. So she can just do like this. So when she talks, she's doing like this, but this is just frozen. Cause she has the muscle right here. And my point is, she could have gave up. She yeah, I think she tried. <laughs> I think she tried to take me out uh, early when she was, cause they had when she was in her twenties. She was probably about 60, 70. Yeah, 20s, I see it by twenties, cause that, that messes up my whole life for me. Yeah. That's their prime age when they're twenties. Yeah, so she like she had to revamp everything, and uh, if she can do what she's been doing for the last forty years, then I can walk and talk and still play a little ball, mm -hmm. do judo, jujitsu. Yeah, I can drive. I can do all this stuff. She can't do this. What am I complaining about? <laughs> yeah, what am I complaining about? I Means that we always look at other people's life. We only look at the good stuff. We don't look at the bad stuff and how people have That's why people are drowning so much. Uh, what are looking for? That's why people are drowning so much. Uh, they try to stay up to date. Honestly, in my opinion, if we want no internet, it wouldn't be like this. Because everybody want what everybody said. They want what the rappers got. They want what the rich people got. Yeah. Just work your regular job and do what you do. And the internet would not be how it is today. Well, like the young kids coming up want to be like, they want to be somebody that they not. Kids don't even want to be their parents no more. Yeah. Back in the day, we wanted to be our parents coming up. But see, now everybody want to be somebody famous. But see, a part of that is because of the parents. Internet. I mean, my brother worked for, uh, I used to, uh, I'm over 30, 40 years. The internet's been around. It yet has not been, social media has not been as is around. But internet's been around. It's been things on the computer that you can do. Even when I was in school, you had to go through basic and learn different things and to get, and you could, you could type, I could type in, um, and send my brother messages here at his job uh, through email. And actually, I used to go to the library, we play a game called Tank. I'm talking about when I was a kid. It's like, like, it wasn't the beauty of it. The games, there's nothing like games now. See, I'm around the age when Atari came out. I'm 53. Sorry. Is that that game with uh, all the multiple games on it? Well, all of yeah, they, it is, it but was it was like that before. You got PlayStation now. PlayStation, but you had Atari, you had Intellivision, ColecoVision, and all of these had their own games. And the, the controller was like a little rectangle. Yeah, but rectangle, you got joystick, or yeah. You got yeah, different, I got, yeah. I ain't gonna lie, I got the, uh, it was a little orange game for kids. I got all that. Yep. The first PS. Yeah, so I was growing up with stuff like that. But before that, you just had, you, they, I talk about early 70s, it was a game called, the, you get video game, is Ping, Pong, and Space Invaders. Atari had that. It's only two games. It's like, it's just tennis racket. Space Ping. Invaders, when you born, it's the days of the time. Two, and Asteroids. Yeah. Those are two, the two games. I ain't lying. I'm five years old. I'm talking about Dallas out, Dallas the arcade. It's two games. Atari and Space Invaders. They come down, uh, you shoot them. And then it was Pong. It wasn't that many games at all. But the internet came on and then people get inundated with the social media because they're allowed to. Kids, kids are not unresponsible enough to, uh, to handle all that. It's, what is that? It's a, um, 
television as well as social media is all is a priming. It primes a person to think a certain way. You look at enough things. Okay, for instance, if you hear you heard a song enough times, though you know it by heart. It's a prime. It's a prime. Or if you go to a certain type of store, in certain stores you go in and it's like they're playing the same music every day. Cause they are. And if you go in, you go to certain popular stores, they play specific music that's an engineer to, to help you want to buy. Fragrance is engineered to help you psychologically they want to trigger you to buy. They do, uh, so you won't even know it, but you'll be primed to purchase. Super Bowl commercials, they're priming you. Definitely. Agendas or regular television are priming you to be desensitized to the way things should be. And so if you make it, if you make it, if you make it so uh, mundane, just this way it is. Just think, if you're eight years old and you're on tele and you're always looking at television and they're pushing agendas, you won't think it's pushing agendas. You think that's where his life is, right? Joe and John and then and uh but Jenna's not Janet no more. Janet's Joe. Uh and because, you know, or Janet's uh the a woofy, a purry. They got people that identify as they call furries. You say it's somebody that they identify as animals. They call furries. Person? Yeah. Goo 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 said. Say identify as put a furry up there. Put put it on. identifies a furry, what does that mean? Meow, they meow, bark, because they feel that they're what, trapped. What's in, 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 I don't know how to pronounce that word, but they dress up like cartoon animals. But they feel that's them. That's their real person. They're not a real person. They're really a, a dog trapped in a person's body. They, hey, I, hey, they hey. identify as that. But see, just think about culture media has shifted. It primes your thought patterns. November the 6th, not November 6th, but when they marched the, the Capitol, there's primed for that. Some people, it's called herd mentality. Some people, you just went up there to protest. But when they start seeing people walk, move, yeah, yeah, I go too. They just start marching with other people. They move with the crowd. Yeah, things are prime, and if you cut a lot of stuff out, the environment that that influences you, then you be able to think clear. Just think about what you think about. We, we, we pay a lot of attention about what what we eat because we want to live longer and feel better. I need to start doing. It. I ain't gonna lie, no. But we don't pay attention to what we look at and what we listen to. Yeah. Because as a man thinks, so is he. So as your mindset is. You be, if your and we, we can't like, I, I say eighty twenty diet should be mentally. And we all got a, a level of junk that we listen to and look at. Mm. It shouldn't be eighty percent junk and twenty percent good stuff. Nah, yeah. So if you're walking around at every other second, you get profane rap lyrics consuming your thought life. That's fucking me. That's messing your head up. Yeah, but th that's what you think about. Yeah. That's controlling your patterns. That control how you act, how you talk, how you live. You start shifting to persona. You start shifting and becoming that. What you hear, you become. Only if you become it because you retain it as a part of you. That, that's me, man. I'm about that life. Joker, you stay in Brumley Wood. You stay on Brassfield. You just listen to some music and think you're there. Yeah, you think you're there. I, bet, I used to uh, do a class on certain scales. I used to do something in this class. I used to teach him. And uh, <laughs> this kid, i never forget this kid. He's my middle school kid. And during high school, pretty much a, pretty much set in your mentality. 
But this kid, he about 12, 13. Light skin with green eyes. There's contact lenses. Yeah, man. He was talking all the time. I said, man, you don't even know who you are. You walk around with green contacts in. Contact lenses in. You just confused. You don't even like yourself. <laughs> you got hot. You got... Because <laughs> he was trying to... I said, don't, he said, bro, don't throw if you can't catch me. That Don't hit me he, with... He was messing with somebody else. And then when he got talking about it, it was a problem. Yeah, he was, talking, he was trying to go back and forth with me. Yes, yeah, see, that's... I, 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 said, I, I said, bro, I, was, I said, don't throw if you can't catch. Yeah. Don't throw if you can't catch. Be that he... Don't throw a, a cracker. You can't take a cracker back. And so he got mad because the high school kids were laughing. Everybody got, was laughing at him in the class. That, yeah, we was outside. And back, he, he, saw, he got mad because he got put on blast. They started walking up to me. Man, really? <laughs> I said, man, please. I said, it's because he put on blast. People do, because he, he want to be embarrassed. Yeah. Nobody want to be He want to be embarrassed. So he walks to me, man, go with that. And no, no fear at all for me. I'm like, I, I said, okay, you embarrassed, so you want to fight. Oh, that's, that's it. You want to get, you want to get Cap Newton. Yeah, you want to get cabin, you want to get drunk. Yeah, yeah. he held his ground. He didn't throw. Kids? I can't no, those are adults. Oh, okay, I kept hearing those was all uh, kids from the thing he was trying to help with. No, no, but one kid tried to sucker punch it and hit the guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, one kid tried to sucker punch the, the two guys he drug. And he, he gave the cab credit. I heard he out there to help. Yeah, it's his thing for the most part. I mean, he had uh, his own team stuff, yeah. Yeah he's, yeah, he's out there to help. That's why these rich people don't want to help from where they're from. And, and that's where Cam apologized because he said that it should never get to that point. He never said that he got hit first. He said, I'm not going to play the victim. He said, but I should be bigger than that. I, actually, I, he said, I am Superman. He said, I'm Superman. But they're looking at me. And, you know, they're looking at me and it doesn't, get, I got to be able to control myself. Yeah. And he even gave, said that the other guys, they do good for the kids. The kids that they're working with, and I should be do. I need to be a better example. Oh, the guys he got in the fight with was happy with the kids too. Yeah, they, they have uh, coaches on the teams. He said, "I know them." He said, "It was like he said, I know them. It's not like they were just some piece strangers." He said, "I know them." He, he could not be talking. He probably been talking just for the last couple of years. He said, but he said, "I know them," so that's why you hear about no charge or nothing like that. No. I never heard that. Guy jumped. He said, he, he "See, one guy said he grabbed my shirt." Now and then he uh he had to go help him out. He helped his brother up route. As the third guy came in. Yeah, it's he's not coming back to the victim. He's, he apologized. The guys apologized and he apologized. Because for everybody's looking, the whole world sees it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's all about a lot of people feed off what what's what's happening and they it's interesting, but that's why you gotta evaluate what you do and why you do it. You evaluate who's around you, who's not around you. You gotta evaluate what you listen to, what you don't listen to, what you look at, what you don't look at. Because I'm telling you, it, it will permeate your thoughts. So I don't want to think. Of, I don't want to look, think about that. But if that's all you're looking at, if that's all you listen to, it's kind of hard. It, it's impossible. If you live in a crack house, it's kind of hard not to be affected by crack. Actually, I used to pick up a guy. Take up a church that, that lived in a crack house. And I, I picked him up. The, the guy ran the crack house, came and got me because uh, something went down. He got beat down. He, he got put in the car. I went to see the guy in the hospital. His wife called me. His wife called me. And uh, the guy that used to take the church. And, uh, and the guy that the, the ran the crack house saw so later on. He stopped doing it. Because I just walk up in there. And, yo, who going to church with me? Oh, man, Rev coming. Close the door. <laughs> Cook it. No, no, but I can't get one guy. Yeah. And it was a, cra- it was a crack house. Uh-huh. I can't one guy and say, hey, who rolled the church with me? Now, I'm young now. How about your age? What, 23? How old are you? I'm 21. 21, yeah. Yeah, how about your age? 23, 24? Yeah, at that time. And I go, uh, and they people 35, 40, they up there, they, oh, man, Rev coming. It was so funny to me. They closed the door. Who come? Who rode the church with today? Oh no, man, baby, next Sunday. And one guy, he about forty years old at that time. This was very impactful. I was like, next day I came, got the other guy. 
He said, yo, excuse me, sir. Sir? What's up, man? Said, yeah, I like to apologize. Apologize for what? Um, well, my language previously, we said, I, I didn't know I, I like to apologize for my language. You know what he said? He didn't cuss. He said something pissed him off. <laughs> he wanted to cuss because he had reverence for what I was doing. And, and, and I'm just like this. Real talk, you need real people. I pass no judgment on by. I take a person as they are. Or any given Sunday. You go remember. I can check right around the corner. We, I go to Evangel. Evangel, I ain't never heard of it. It's right around the corner for y'all, off, off Cone. Oh, it's, it's on Cone. It's on Cone, on Cone. It's on, yeah, it's on Cone, Cone Boulevard. You make a left turn. You know what the Sportsplex is? When they play basketball, it's sports plex. The only basketball before I know where it is is on Washington Street. No, nah, that's in the hood. That's by, by my old house. Yeah, I used to stay over there. I used yeah. to stay in. Uh, no, I stayed in Washington. You talking about Washington? Go downtown? Yeah, yeah. 1400 Washington Street. Yeah, I stayed in Douglas. I stayed in 18 Douglas. I stayed off MLK okay. for 15 years. So, Windsor Center in Wernersville, that's where I lived at for a while. But I said, my church is right, it's right by. Is anybody welcome church? Yeah, everybody welcome. Yeah, everybody about Bojangles. It's, it's further down. It's on left hand side. It's, it's nice. It's big size church. You're talking about where American Deli and stuff is? It's not in. Yeah, American Deli. That's no. That's over there by Wendy's. Yeah, okay, if you. Okay, it's Cone Boulevard. So the Cone goes. If you keep going straight. Okay. I'm really from that side. I'm used to the other side by A and T. Okay, that's close to the town. But where you are now, my church, I, I mean, it's literally right out of the corner. I just type in church and they'd be there. You, you, you put Evangel Fellowship, Evangel, yeah, yeah, church, yeah, close near me. Church yeah. near me. It's two churches. It's the African church, which is like in the Walmart area. Uh, I know this guy in the people. It's African church. And then you got Evangel Fellowship. Because we come online, too. Yeah, yeah. So it's right around the corner. You got a lot of young folks, your age. A lot of them. Oh yeah, and if you can't make it, just pull up online. You can pick up people from, I don't know if the bus ministry comes out, but I don't know. It's practical applications in life. A lot of people don't, you don't get that. You don't get that. And a lot of times you need somebody that's a peer. You need somebody that can, we ain't always right. <laughs> but you need somebody to be, to walk this thing out with. Yeah, so you know. But that the guy said, he, he said, yeah, I said, the guy pissed me off. Said, oh man, you good? That ain't the worst thing I ever heard. That it don't bother me anyway. <laughs> that don't bother me anyway. Around my kids, that's the thing. But you know, I, yeah, at that time I had no kids. Yeah, you know. How many kids you got? I got two. I, girl. Yeah, thirteen. My, my son's thirteen. My daughter's eleven. That that makes you evaluate yourself. Yeah. You gonna make them go to college? No, nah, make them make them get out. <laughs> Whatever you want you to go to the military. <laughs> uh, make them. Uh, that's a strong word. <laughs> make them. Um, you got to do something. That's how my family was. Hey, you, you got they, they told me I didn't have to go to uh, college, but they wanted me at least get a job. And so, you feel me? Like, see what it is for myself. Yeah. They really didn't even want me to move out when I moved out. But I moved out when I was like 18. Uh-huh. I moved out when I was 18 just to show my parents that I could do this by myself. It has that been? It's been straight. It's, it's ups and downs. Like right now, it's a down. But what's your end game? Huh? What's your end game? What's that? You're 21. What? What you want to do? I really, I ain't gonna lie. All my life, I wanted to drive um, trucks and stuff like Peterbilt's and all that, but it's like I can't get into it. Like why? I don't know. Cause my uncle stopped driving. That's who I wanted to drive with. I don't really want to work with nobody else. But it's like you I got might to... gotta end up just getting out of my comfort zone. Do that for a couple years to get my own. You got your CDL? Nah. But your uncle stopped driving, but he can coach you though. Yeah, he could. And refer you to somebody that he's good with, right? Yeah, he could do that. You right? Have you asked him? Nah. <laughs> I haven't. I'm, I'm honest, I haven't. Yeah, he probably didn't know you. He, did you know you try to go that route? Nah, I don't talk to him like that. How's your relationship with him? It's good. It's decent. You just don't talk to him like that. Yeah, I just don't. I really don't be down here like that. Also, oh, he, is he down here? 
Yeah, my people, all my people stay down here in this area. I, I'm in one. Are you going to the crib? No, nah, I ain't going home. I'm going to where my cousin is. Okay. But it's around here? Yeah. Okay. So where did you go to high school at? Down here. Okay. I went to a little spot called Western Hornet. I moved around, away from here when I was 18. Shoot, if you play Western Hornet. You, what's high school called? Western Hornet. Western Hornet High. Only high school in the area, right? Yeah, uh, Over Hills High School. So, whoa. You kind of got me a little bit. Uh, also, if you play ball, you've been a man. Cause yeah, ain't nothing but the country. <laughs> the, uh, the, the high school football players are celebrities, ain't they? From my school? Yeah. Nah. Really? Nah, uh, what you call it? Uh, back that way, Sanford, I think they got like one player that played for Carolina now. But I think he played football. Yeah, I think he played football. He played for um, NC. You know but, uh, but as far as Friday nights, what do people do? Bro, our team was so garbage. Oh, yeah. okay. That's why the coach asked me every day. No. I don't want to play with y'all. They was that bad? Terrible. They win any? Terrible. One one and done. One and done. Terrible. All the seniors started quitting and everything. You talk about terrible. one game the whole season. One game. The only team that was good for us was the JV team. The, the varsity team, trash. That's the coaches. The coaches suck. That's what they said. They fired one of them. Yeah. And that's it, when they won that one game. Because if, no if the JV is good, <laughs> then they get messed up when they go to. The JV was winning every game. JV was good. JV was always good. The varsity, Different was, coaches only, the varsity was only good in 2000. So diff different coaches? Yeah, it was a different coach. JV had different coaches than the varsity. Yep. Why did they offer the varsity the, the varsity job to the JV? They should have did something. Anything would have helped. They were trying to pull anybody they could. I'm trying to see that. Why did they do that? What they call it? The money people would have been complaining. I'm thinking about Friday Night Lights. The boosters. You had boosters? Like scouts? No, the parents that raised up money for the team. Oh, no. Nah, we ain't had those. Okay. They didn't have parents to like, cook for their team and stuff. And they, they ain't did nothing for real. That school would just really run down. Okay. The only thing they cared about was probably like the hunting team. We got a real country school. They didn't care about none of that extra stuff that the black kids had going on. They wanted to focus on. But the coach, would the, the JB coach black or white? He was white. They uh, both well, of them. They had another black coach, like the assistant coach. Yeah. They had a black one, but they was only focused on their golf club and the and hunting. The hunting. Team. Really? Real good at golf, real good at the hunting. So you'd raise up straight with good old boys. Yeah, straight country. Like, How about the wrestling team? Oh, yeah, that was good, too. Yeah, that was good, too. That was good. I ain't gonna lie, that was good. Real good. I think they made the mistakes. Why'd you get a wrestling team? I ain't trying to do no wrestling. I, I, ain't, I ain't wrestling nobody. <laughs> so you may get triggered to hurt somebody? Yeah, I ain't wrestling. <laughs> I be done punch you. I ain't I don't wanna wrestle. I mean, the guy, guys I play ball with in high school. Shame. So we all, everybody has to do an alternate sport. They have to do a uh -huh. track all season with or football. See, that's what you're going to see a lot of down here. A true what? Him on that dirt bike. Okay. Yeah, oh, they they right now. Huh? <laughs> you trying to be like the big brothers right there. He's stuck. Yeah, so he, it was funny because he had a wrestling match, right? First wrestling match. Our shake was getting him. I'll be straight. A fight slam. You're supposed, to let, you're supposed to drop a knee when you slam. What, wrestling? Yeah, you can still flex somebody, but it's a certain way you do it. But he's fighting. He just did hit. Bam! And the coach is laughing. He got disqualified. Damn. He got disqualified, but he was bad has a little. He was bad has. He's like, yo. He, he could have did hit in real good. Yeah, so because wrestling is just a, a or, structure organized way you can fight. He's already aggressive. That's like, yeah, he's uh, it's all cool. Oh, oh you right? Oh, bam! Slam! Oh, it's funny to me because he could if he knew how to wrestle. He knew how to fight. He, he knew how to wrestle. Fight, he knew how to wrestle. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a different, a different concept. Yeah. Cause I watched that one time. Nah, I couldn't even get put in a chokehold like that. Cause they put you in that chokehold until you tell. What you? What they got pinned you? Yeah, you can tell, but uh, you can't tap and wrestle. I wrestle. I'm a wrestler. So. My son tried to do that crap. Tried to, do it. Tried to take, he, my son was wrestling six years. Or five years, but he tried to tap out. He quit. He, I remember he, we were in the match, he quit. He quit. You eat tacos? 
Yeah. When you leave out, try those. If you hope, try those when you leave out. Right here? Yeah, good tacos. Best tacos around. I just started eating it not too long ago. Yeah, he, he was like, the coach was looking at him. I think he was doing all right. But the, the guy got him. He bent him. And he said, no, he tried to tap out before. And the coach said he tried to tap out. But this ain't W. Well, because we did uh, jujitsu too. So in jujitsu, you can tap out. We are you talking about reverse move? You said, I, if you quit. Yeah, I want to quit. Ref, I quit. Because <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. He told the referee, he said, he, he, yeah, he quit. He told the referee. And he was winning. He, no, he was down by one point. And, he said, and the ref said, man, what I'm going to do? He said, he said, he quit. He literally, yeah, I, man, he just triggered something. He literally quit. I'm going to bring that up. He helped me out. I bring that up and I had another conversation with him. He said, we don't quit, man. And you try your very best, but he quit. I mean, he was like down, what, one point, two points. And he got back. And I said, okay. And, oh, that's what happened. I was on the said, yeah. I said, turn, turn, keep on. And then it's so good. We had one second left to the seat until the, the, the session was over. Now, good. We got one more period. Coach, the referee said, yeah, over. Is he, man, he quit. Is it what he was? He said, I quit. Is that big turn right here? But he, but he was winning. My boy, he was winning. He was like one point down. He just quit. You don't know why? I don't care. You step in the match. You're supposed to you do everything you can. Yeah. Yeah. Next season, me, you don't start. But you know, while you in it, you don't quit. We don't quit. Because life not afford you the luxury. That's what wrestling teaches you. They afford you luxury, luxury to quit. You can't blame the team. You want the team. When adversity comes, you have to attack it head on. You, you may have to adjust the way you come at it. You may have to win on points and not to, you may be too strong. So you got to get a point, get out. <laughs> get a point, get out. Be like boxing. Get a point, get out. You got to do a Mayweather. Get me a uh, weather. I always wanted to get into boxing though. Are you still can? No, <laughs> yeah, you be heavyweight though. Never. Yeah, and you ain't never lie, it's this country. I just. <laughs> yeah, it is. I miss it out here, though. It's peaceful. Yeah. I'll probably be back down here a lot more this month and next month when it get hot. You got your four wheeler? Yeah, I got four wheeler. <laughs> you know, I got YMC 450. Your four wheeler, four wheeler is y'all bicycles. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Because there's so much land out here, you can't just have a regular bicycle. Yes, Lord. And it's so crazy. You see how them white boys are just riding, right? Now you catch us riding. Yeah. Oh, now the police want to get behind us. You see them riding. The police can let them go ahead and go about their business. Let them ride all day long. Right. As soon as we pull our bikes out, they got to chase us. It's just so crazy down here. That's the only part. Like, they they really pick and choose who they want to get out here. Like, that's what I don't like. It's the good old boy. Yeah. Do, do, do. That's what meaning, no more. Yeah, that's, that's, that's But it's nice out here, though. For the most part. Everybody really family on one side. It'd be like all these white people on this side, they all family. Then when you go to where my side is, just that whole road is us <laughs> and Mexicans. How y'all get along with the Mexicans? Hey, Mexicans don't like black people. Yeah, that's what they say, but they invite us every time they cook. Well, they cook good, though. We don't, we don't never go, though. <laughs> we don't never go. <laughs> Man, I ate, man, they cook, yeah. and, and they clean. And it's like the meat be red. I like when that meat be red. Yeah. Was, but you don't go over to the family, but you been over to eat? Nah, I ain't going over there to eat. I, just, like, I go to any Mexican restaurant and stuff. I ain't going to nobody house to eat. But are you friends with the next one? Are you saying hey to them and stuff? Like, but nah, we don't talk to them that much. They moved out of there out of nowhere. It's like two of them, but I think they both know each other. They're in two different houses. You know they know each other's family. They try to build community. Right. They try to get build community. Learn niggers. Yeah. They about to be out there deep. They are uh, really, the white folks really building a lot of houses out here. It's a lot of houses that ain't been out here over here on this side or on the other side. They starting to put houses everywhere. They trying to turn this into a city. I feel like they're heading into the city in a couple of years. Oh, wow. Fishing? Mm-hmm. We do a lot of that. 
Yeah, yeah I guess that's where, you know, you get to actually enjoy nature. A kid can be a kid. Yeah, during the summer, yeah. Yeah. So when it's cold out here, we don't do nothing. Well, that's we play video games. Yeah, that's what I do. I still play video games. Call of Duty, what's your game? What's your game? Yeah, Call of Duty. Call of Duty and 2K. You got a crew? A crew? That you, that you play with? That. I don't be on like that. I like playing Warzone, Search and Destroy and all that. Everybody don't be wanting to play. I, I really be playing with random people. I, I, th I think it's, I think the video games, I haven't done it. I think it's really cool. It's cool if you got a crew of your boys. Mm -hmm. Yo, man, what's your Friday? All right. All right, we got a team together. All right, okay. All right, we all, we play Call of Duty. All right. Everybody, y'all you know, join cribs. Y'all playing Talking Junk. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, Talking Junk. Because that's interaction to me. Yeah. And that's, it's not just, it's not just a computer. And you don't got to get, no, you don't got to get drunk or how to have fun. You just having fun. On you just having fun. Yeah, yeah, you just having fun. So that's why I be talking That's about. the engagement. You, you having fun. I said, wake up! I ain't sleep. I ain't sleep. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, that's the fun. But I have to be careful of, um, I may play sometimes. The games versus what I was growing up, man. It's like, they, they're too real. Yeah, they're definitely real. They're too real. So I, I don't want to get lost. I don't want, your brain really doesn't know the difference between fantasy and reality. Mm -hmm. And I'm old enough that I can differentiate. If I stay in fantasy too long, I don't know if I just don't know you because when life happens you get you get a lot more stressors mm -hmm. and you can you I can easily just like with the same thing with alcohol drug I can easily see myself you know getting upset and, and just escaping in the game of seven hours mm -hmm. but then I forfeit life but I'm in a game I'm feeling better next it may be 12 hours next time you know but I can't get that 12 hours back and what I have to show, I got a good score. <laughs> unless I'm competing, unless I'm competing, I'm a professional 2K athlete. That's different. I'm getting paid for that, you know. Yeah, you ain't never lie. Show the sticks. Yeah, for sure. I think, I, I think I'm a see Coyote run right beside the car. Which it do be foxes out here, though. That's one thing I watch out for. What, they attack you? They will. Oh. If you outside, just sit there, Fox will come to you. Oh, they come to you? Mm-hmm. The foxes don't care. I thought they... Oh, they're not scared. I no, thought... No, fox ain't like no cat or nothing. Fox will tear you up. Like a cool? Like a raccoon? Tear you up. What? Oh, that's if they... If they're mad or they ain't... If they're... I've seen it in the neighborhood. And they're scattered. Yeah. Yeah, some of them are scattered. Oh, those ones probably, uh, um, uh, mad. Right, home. Home real mad. They'll, uh, it's foaming at the mouth. <laughs> they trying to get bit by one of them. Versus cool, cool stand up on you. Back home. Yeah. This nigga, you don't want none of this. <laughs> Man. I did get a ride, though. It's a premium ride because nobody come out here. Mm -hmm. I got a ride. I don't know where it's gonna take me though. Oh, somebody um, is it out here right now. Yeah, it, it's like it, it popped up as a premium ride. What that mean when it's a premium ride? They're they gonna pay more. Oh, okay. Cause nobody come out here. <laughs> That's probably why it's premium. They gonna pay. It, 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 it's, a, it's a more likely it's a premium ride. I never used it before. You probably it's gonna... my first time being in one. Oh really? Yeah. They got my brother right there. Where? Yeah. I'm right there. Oh, he knew that was you? Yeah, I guess he did. I don't know how he knew, though. That's why I don't know how he knew. Yeah, he blinked. He had his hand yeah, out. I don't know how he knew. He saw your hair. I don't know how he knew that. Man, that's crazy. You get on a hunting team? Hunting team, nah. Won't for me. You got to do one of my boys shoot you. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? That, that can't happen. That's why we don't run in the... Uh, some of the white people like us. Like where we at, it's a, a field, but a white man own it, and we ride back there. So he was like, just don't come back here doing so and so and so and so time. Like when they hunting, so we won't mess up no hunting thing. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, they say, oh, man, I'm sorry. Accident hit you. Oh, can you, can you, can you walk all right? Yeah. And they may, they hit you back. 
get you. you. And then they say it was an accident. They get away with it. You know, they try to kill you. Just, just hit you, get, shoot you in the butt or something. Yeah. And I didn't know you can. You. If you have enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe so you can be notified when a new episode is posted. So you can rave and review about this episode with your friends. And if you forget anything else from this episode, remember this, that every day you get a vertical, make it your golden life to move forward and never move back. This is the Hero's Journey with Dr. D. Peace and blessings. And we're out.